See how to build your own dynamic patching rings in today's patch FAQ. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And in 2023, the number one most clicked video on the Tanium Tech Talks playlist was the patching zero touch episode with Jason Wasser. It was the most viewed episode. And, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm circling back now to create this patch FAQ series where we're covering all the bases and there's even still more coming in the series. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to kind of revisit something that we talked about in that patch zero touch. That episode was about relative patch lists. Now we're going to talk about relative maintenance windows, which is a new feature in patch that you can use today. And so Jason's here to explain what what I have uh, affectionately called the trifecta of zero touch patching. So Jason Wasser, welcome back to the show. Introduce yourself for our audience. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Jason Wasser. I'm a technical account manager with Tanium. I've been here about six years, uh, but I've been doing operations for a long time. Uh, before Tanium, I did a lot of Microsoft patching, Linux patching, and software deployment, provisioning of devices. Uh, just really anything in the operations space. And now at Tanium, I'm helping customers be successful doing operations with the Tanium platform. Well, Jason, uh, the fans have spoken. Your video in 2023 on zero touch patching uh, took the top place for the most clicks uh, on our YouTube playlist here. And, and there's no no mystery why, because patching is something everybody has to do. So, uh we want to revisit that. Could you just recap briefly uh, as we're getting ready to talk about relative maintenance windows, uh, just recap briefly for our audience in case they haven't seen that video, what are relative patch lists and how those are helpful? Sure. The, the patch lists are a component of Tanium that is basically what are the patches that are approved? It's a rules-based approach. And that rules-based approach uh, can be based upon several categories and classifications, but the, the relative patch list feature basically says if the patch has aged three days, five days, seven days, whatever days you want, it, they're automatically approved. What this allows you to do is you, you, you go from a light touch patch automation to a complete zero touch. Because as you move through your rings, your patch lists are automatically releasing new patches after they reach a certain age. So patch Tuesday comes around and maybe your first ring gets those patches. And then maybe three days later on that Friday after Patch Tuesday, patches are automatically approved and sent out to those. And then maybe a week later, uh, the patches are automatically approved for the for the next ring or for full production. As we were talking about this, as we were preparing for the show, you said, you know, this is kind of a a, a pattern now that's been adopted, not just because Microsoft started the whole Patch Tuesday thing. Could you talk a little bit about how broadly this has actually pervaded the IT ops community and all the vendors in that space? I was looking, uh, Patch Tuesday is now 20 years old. Uh, it's, it's some days it feels longer than that. <laughs> some days it feels shorter than that, you know, because we, we all may have maybe some scar tissue or a little PTSD of when those patches went sideways and then we didn't sleep that week or whatever. And I think maybe sometimes some of those memories are, are long lived to maybe keep us from moving forward with automation. But of course, we can all take some baby steps to uh, get some of our sanity back. Uh, but you're right, the, the the rhythm of Patch Tuesday has been adopted by many other vendors, such as Adobe, but uh, many other vendors are starting to release their patches on the same day for whatever reason. That rhythm has, uh, in many ways, shaped our work lives, work lives, uh, especially us as patch admins. And then oftentimes that bleeds into our personal lives because maybe we're patching after hours or trying to troubleshoot things and that's no fun. Uh, so, you know, we're just trying to help uh, take some of that pain out of that, that patching process. Uh, and this is one another one of those features that's going to help you do that by introducing relative maintenance windows. It really is a mindset change when you begin to patch with Tanium because so many of the limitations of previous eras and previous tools go away. And one of the things that I've always told people is that, you know, maybe you were patching 
slowly on purpose because you wanted to wait and make sure that it wasn't a bad patch. But the, the benefit here with Tanium is, is just as fast as you can deploy those patches, you can uninstall them just as fast as well. It doesn't take you weeks to push it out, find it's bad, and then weeks to recall it. You can do all that within a day if you needed to with Tanium. So tell us about then relative maintenance windows. I, I think I picked up you describing a little bit of that earlier uh, in your intro. How do relative maintenance windows work in Tanium? Because of that rhythm of Patch Tuesday, we we have to install patches um, after they come out. And so sometimes we, even as businesses, we even we even assign our maintenance windows based upon that monthly event. Uh, but um, that can be really tricky because if you want to go the Wednesday after Patch Tuesday, you think, well, Patch Tuesday is the second Tuesday of the month. Therefore, the Wednesday after that is the second Wednesday of the month. Well, that's not always true. And, you know, working with dates and times and time zones and all that can be confusing. Uh, and so what, you know, many businesses have opted for this approach where they do relative uh, to Patch Tuesday. And they say, okay, maybe the Friday after Patch Tuesday or the second Friday after Patch Tuesday. And so th that's what this feature is all about, is ensuring that we can offset the maintenance window based upon another date in a month, which is typically Patch Tuesday. And that's massive. I mean, people have been asking us for this feature for a long time. And long so time. while this is a, a Patch FAQ episode, it's also a new, new feature release episode because this is brand new. Um, and as we were planning the show, you said by the time we're recording, by the time this gets out, it should be everywhere released. So, uh, and this really completes then the last ingredient we needed for that complete patch automation where you can literally set it and forget it on the list and the window now. That's correct. If you're an organization and you're like, well, I really like that zero touch patch automation, but our maintenance windows are based upon Patch Tuesday, well, now you can take that final leap into full zero-touch patch automation. If you go to help.team.com, search for a relative maintenance window, and we'll just search for that. In this case, we're actually no community article, but just the, the documentation for now. This is going to walk through how to use the relative maintenance window feature. Uh, but instead of reading the documentation to you, which would not be very fun, we're just going to walk through how to do it. So here I have my lab and I'm going to create a window. Certainly I can give it maybe so we'll call it the second Wednesday after Patch Tuesday. We'll just use that as an example since that can be tricky. And I want to show you what that looks like. Well, hold on, let me select windows here. But I'm going to choose, uh, let's say I choose monthly and I want every month and, you know, I want the, I want the second uh, Wednesday there, right? And so what happens is if I get to May, well, the second Wednesday is, is May 8th. Well, that's actually before Patch Tuesday. That's the challenge that we're running into. And you know, I really love this feature about Tanium Patch because sometimes uh, date math calculations, I make mistakes. You know, it's really difficult sometimes. This actually gives us the next five instances, which is really helpful. Now, if instead of choosing monthly, I'm going to choose our new monthly relative to another day. Now, it is marked as beta. It's a brand new feature. Where, why is it beta? We want to make sure we can get this feature into your hands so you can start to use it and give us your feedback. It's hard to code. Uh, write software that works with date times and time zones and daylight saving time shifts and if it crosses the midnight barrier. But, you know, we even as admins, I have made many mistakes Re misreading a log file because it was in a different time zone or I thought I was scheduling a job to happen next week and I did it the week after. And so let's let's work together. Uh, we're committed to making this working for you. So uh, definitely start to use it and uh, and give us your feedback. We're choosing monthly relative to another day. We're going to, it defaults to the second Tuesday because that's the patch Tuesday. And then you can choose the plus or minus. So plus is how many days after and minus will be how many days before. In this case, if we want this Wednesday after patch Tuesday, we want to add one day. And now if we look at the next five instances, I can see that this is properly scheduled where it should be on May 15th rather than on May 8th. And now I know that I can trust that this is actually working with my organizational approved maintenance windows to go on the, on the Wednesday after patch Tuesday. So then I would do one day after eight days after or something like that to get like yes. the second Wednesday after the second yeah. Tuesday kind of thing. 
Exactly. All right. In fact, I have a, a number of examples I built out in a ring-based approach, since we've talked a lot about patch automation using phases or rings. And so I have my ring one here. It runs on the patch Tuesday, right? I want These are like my, my canary machine, my pilot machines. I want them to be patched as quickly as possible, like patch Tuesday night. So I can get some real quick feedback. Are there any patches that break stuff? And then my ring two says, I want you to patch the first Friday after patch Tuesday. This is basically uh, then saying, okay, three days after the second Tuesday, go ahead and do the patching. That might be maybe early adopters, uh, maybe your IT friends and family. Patch ring three might be, you know, broader distribution of endpoints, maybe not quite full production, but maybe a larger set of endpoints. This is 10 days after. So this is 10 days after that. That's going to be the Friday, the second Friday after patch Tuesday. And of course, then if we want to wait that long for, for ring four, 17 days after, that's the third Friday after patch Tuesday. Maybe that's your production or critical asset servers, or you want to make sure that you've had plenty of time to test those patches before they go out. This is just an example of, of a ring-based approach. You can certainly adjust it to whatever your schedule might be for your organization. Wait, did, did you hear that, Jason? I think I just heard angels singing, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> just seeing these patch rings laid out like this, uh, completely automated. Wow. Yeah. This is a new feature that, uh, we, like, like you said, people have been asking for, and we've talked about this ring based approach. And I thought I would just take just a couple of minutes to talk about what, what could you do? What are some strategies you could use to populate your rings? Right. Cause that's really the hardest choice. It's the, the automation, the configuration isn't that hard. Sometimes when I'm working with customers, the hardest thing for them is to figure out who goes first, who goes second, who goes third. There's a couple different approaches that you can use. Maybe you already have approaches. Maybe you already have groups built out. So you can use Active Directory groups. You could use naming. Like if you have a really good naming structure for maybe dev, test, stage, production, uh, you could use uh, organizational unit. You could use... Um, IP subnets. So maybe you've de you've have a well defined uh, deployment. Maybe uh, you can use those existing structures that you already have in place for defining your patch deployment rings and just plug those into Tanium. But I wanted to show you a another approach, uh, which would just be using custom tags. We've used custom tags before. Uh, we've talked about them a little bit in some other videos, but custom tags are just arbitrary text labels, registry values in Windows, text file on, on Linux. And what you can do then is if you build out these groups, your rings using those tags, then you can apply those tags and opt machines into different rings, right? And that can be a one-time process or you maybe use some automation. I've even seen customers use enhanced tags uh, which is a different topic altogether, but they use enhanced tags pulling data from ServiceNow, which assigns them their maintenance windows. And so that means your, your source of truth is coming from another data source being ServiceNow. That data is being fed into Tanium, which then uh, an, an application owner, server owner can then assign their endpoint to a particular maintenance window in ServiceNow, and that automatically flows into Tanium for assignment of maintenance windows. When we were at Converge a few months ago, I was on a panel discussion with a manufacturing customer, and, and they were a global manufacturer with lots of sites. And they said what they did, and instead of the central Tanium admins having to assign all the windows, they delegated that with RBAC and Tanium so that the individual location site admins could tag their own machines, and then they had predefined maintenance windows. And so they gave control of which machines go into those windows to the local admins at all those sites uh, globally, which I thought was really clever. You know, as IT people were given the responsibility but a lot of times we get a lot of pushback, people whine and complain because they didn't want their endpoint restarted or their server. And so if you can if you can kind of give that control back to them and say, look, you have to choose a maintenance window and you give them a way to do that, whether that's through Tanium or through ServiceNow or some other automation or integration, uh, then that, that, that puts them back in the driver's seat and when they can, uh, when their machine can be patched but still ensuring that they are being patched, right? So you got to have some sort of enforcement there, but uh, give them some some choice in the matter. And even put like a backstop catch-all, like everything else in case we missed anything, all computers or all windows, you know, right? Just gets the rest of it at the end. Exactly. So we also want to talk about uh, random computer groups. This is an option that you can use to help define uh, or, or 
break up your deployments into rings. Uh, these are expressions that use the, the computer ID of the, of the Titanium client. The Titanium client each has a unique ID that's generated. And what we can do is use that ID to say, I want 25% of those. So let's just get a random sampling of 25% of the endpoints. And so these are four groups that, that break that the this random ID up into, into four separate, distinct, random 24, 25% groups. And then what I can do is, is say for my general population of, of workstations, I could say I want to, I want to say I want to in, just randomly choose the first 25% of say Windows workstations for this patch deployment or for this office deployment or for this uh, enforcement of group policy. So I can start to roll it out uh, and just you know get a random sampling and can start to get collect some feedback and then move on to do another random sampling. And you can you can reuse these computer groups as well. So we talked about uh, if we want to um, add or, or make a Windows workstations. So we want to say Windows workstations and it's uh, 25%. So I can basically and those two together. And now I have a 25% a, a random sampling of my Windows workstations. Nice. So this might be a helpful tip. You can try this out, see if that helps. Sometimes you, you, know, you just want to make a change or roll out in rings and faces, and you don't have any predefined groups out there. You can use this as a way of rolling things out in a way that's, that's safe, but predictable. Wow. So not only do we have the relative maintenance windows after patch Tuesday. Now we can, if necessary, if we don't already have predefined groups, we can just uh, roll these out again with a couple layers of filters here to make sure we're not hitting critical machines first and so forth and hit that random population. Very nice. Wow. Anything else as we wrap up? Well, that's it. Now we've got the trifecta, like you said, we've got ongoing patch deployments. We've got relative patch list, relative maintenance windows. We've got ring-based deployments and examples of how to build out your rings. So now, uh, you know, keep moving forward on your patch automation journey. Try to push it one step further as you can. Uh, and I just I wish you all happy patching, everyone. Thank you again for uh, Pure Gold here on this uh, latest patch FAQ with truly zero touch patching. Set it and forget it. Uh, now we've got it so that we can, uh, the, one of the most requested features we've ever had in the patch module is that relative patch Tuesday window. Now we've got that as well as the uh, relative patch list themselves. So, wow. Uh, and I, I, I'm really interested to hear uh, from you how this has uh, changed your life. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking how much time this is going to save, right? Catch me on social media or email me at goatanium.com. I'd love to hear from you where this is really making a difference in your workflow. So uh, again, Jason uh, had that help article at the beginning of the video that's in the show notes below. I also want to do another shout out for Tanium certification. Yep, Tanium certified right there. At uh, Converge this year, we announced the Tanium Certified Professional and Endpoint Management exam and certification. So that does include patch and deploy content. So uh, the things I, I don't know that the things we're talking about on the show specifically are going to be in that exam in the short term, maybe long term. You'll see some of that in there, but I just want to throw that out. Um, what with all the time that you save with all this new automation, go out there and get Tanium certified. Uh, we'd love to see you at Converge getting those exams at a discount, uh, or you could even take them from home. Um, just uh, you can do the online at home, uh, or you can do them at a train uh, a testing center somewhere. So go out there and get Tanium certified while you're at it. So Jason, thanks again for this uh, patch FAQ series, and until next time, actually. Uh, there's going to be another next time. We're going to do more of these patch FAQs. They're still coming. Keep watching. So until next time, go Zanium.